So now I have a ball that's at the top of a slope. A five kilogram ball at the top of a slope. The vertical height of the slope is six meters and the horizontal length is eight meters. Um, so I'm gonna start the ball rolling down until it comes to here. And the question is, what's gonna be our final velocity? And again, we want to try to use the same systematic approach. And it starts at rest still? Yep, it still starts at rest. So first we label the initial and final points? Yeah, so our initial point here would be here. It would be uh, when we're starting. And the final point would be when we get here to the bottom of the slope. Now, let's think about what the object will look like when it's, say, here, at this point. Well, what are going to be the forces on this object? We ignore no force. I should have said there's no friction. What direction will the normal force be in? Uh, it will like this? An angle. No. Yeah, it'll be perpendicular to the slope. Mm -hmm. So the normal force at this point would look like this. Notice that the direction of the normal force here will be constantly changing. When the object is over here, the normal force will look like this. When the object is over here, the normal force will look like this. Since the slope is constantly changing, the normal force will be constantly changing. So I'm just picking one representative point here to indicate the normal force. But is that why we can't use like kinematics for this? Cause yeah. Okay. Or anyway, that's related to why we can't use it. Um. Okay. Um, so we've identified all the forces on this object. Remember that we need to identify which forces are conservative and which are non-conservative. Well, is the weight conservative or non-conservative? Conservative. Yeah, the weight is conservative. Um, and uh, how about the normal force? Because I simply mentioned before, only this semester, only the weight and the spring force will be conservative. Everything else this semester will be non-conservative, besides the weight and the spring force. Remember, we haven't learned anything like normal force potential energy, <coughs> so the normal force can't be conservative. Only conservative things have potential energy. All right, so uh, we're ready for step three. Identify the work done by each of the non-conservative forces and plug them into our key equation. Here's our key equation again. So what we need to do here is look at every single force and determine whether we should plug in a number for it here. Let's start with the weight. Should we plug in a number for the weight into the left-hand side here? Yes. No, it's conservative. Oh. Remember that what this stands for is the network non done by the non-conservative forces. Okay. So NC here stands for non-conservative forces. So we could put the normal force there. Yeah, so let's take our time and think about that. So the work, we're not going to plug in the weight. Now let's think about the normal force and let's figure out um, how much work it's doing. Well, how do you calculate the work that something is doing First of all, you have to draw its velocity vector. Well, how would I draw the velocity vector at this point? Yeah, remember that the velocity is always tangent to your path. We haven't talked about that much, but your velocity is always tangent to your path. So at this point, the velocity would look like this. And at this point, the velocity would look like this. And at this point, the velocity would look like this. The velocity vector here is always changing in direction because the path is changing. So here's what the velocity looks like. So what can we say about the work that the normal force is doing here based on this velocity vector? Is the normal force doing positive work, negative work, or zero work? So which vector? Is the normal force doing positive work, negative work, or zero work based on comparing it to the velocity vector? Zero. Zero. So what number should I plug in on the left-hand side of this equation? All right, so I mentioned before that a lot of the time when you're working with this equation, a lot of terms will come out to be zero. See, that can't surprise you. Because remember, a lot of the time, the problem will be just, just be conservation of energy. But well, this is another case where energy will be conserved. This is more interesting than the last case. In the last case, energy was being conserved because the only force was conservative, weight. In this case, there is a non-conservative force, the normal force, but it's not doing any work because it's always perpendicular to the path. At every point, the normal force is going to be perpendicular to the path. 
That's why we made such a big deal earlier about knowing when the work was positive, negative, or zero. When a force is perpendicular to your, um, to your movement, you're doing zero work. So you always have to identify the velocity to figure out whether something's going to be, uh, whether something's doing work. Maybe I shouldn't put it here because it makes it look, the velocity is not a force, but we're comparing it to the normal force. Okay, so um, again, we can use conservation of energy on this problem. What, what is the normal force doing here? It's changing the object's direction. The normal force here is only changing the direction of the object, not the speed. The only thing that's changing the speed here is the x component of the weight. Only the x component of the weight, or uh, well, only the component of the weight that's parallel to the path would be changing the speed. All right, well, what's the most useful equation to write here now? Remember that when you, uh, we should be now in the right-hand column for number four. The right-hand column for number four, E initial equals E final. So when energy is conserved, this ends up being the basic equation we're going to use. E initial equals E final. What now? KI plus EI equals KI Good. What then? here then in this equation we should have mentioned that this stands for the vertical height all we care about here is the vertical height so this eight meters is irrelevant in this case also the total length of this curve is irrelevant all we care about is the vertical height when you're figuring out MGH this stands for vertical height only oftentimes on track on problems they'll give you a bunch of um, other numbers to distract you but we need the vertical height okay that's good what else can we plug in here One half mv squared, well, the mass would be five. Good, and how about u final? Zero. Again, we're assuming that we're going to choose zero, this point, to be zero height. Because you get the same answer as the problem before, even though it. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad that you noticed that. So physicists think that this is really neat. It sounds, uh, physicists think that it's really neat, that it doesn't matter whether you fall straight down. Or, whether, or what the path looks like. So notice this could be any path at all, as long as it's frictionless. It doesn't matter what path you're rolling down, as long as it's frictionless, you're going to end up at the same speed. Um, and this is one reason why physicists think that conservation of energy is neat, because this gives us a very simple way to see that. So we don't need to do these calculations. We know the calculations will come out to be the same as before. What did we get before? 10.8? Because in this case, we're not moving down. Well, I'm glad that you were thinking about the direction, but you can see here the direction was more interesting than you might have thought. When we get to the bottom here, we're moving horizontally. So the velocity here now will be 10.8 meters per second to the right. How can it be that the speed is the same as the last example, but the direction is different? Well, remember that kinetic energy only uh, tells you speed, not direction. So in this case, the kinetic energy turned out to be the same at the end as when the ball was just dropped straight down. So the speed had to be the same at the end. But that doesn't mean the direction has to be the same, because direction does not determine kinetic energy. Remember that kinetic energy only depends on speed, not direction. But let's just try to get a little bit more intuition of what's going on here. Remember what we're talking about here is conservation of energy. When energy is conserved, that means that any energy that you lose in one way has to be gained in another way. How much potential energy is this object losing? Well, this object is losing 294 joules of potential energy. So how much kinetic energy does it have to gain? 294 joules. And it doesn't matter whether it falls down a um, incline or whether it goes down a straight inclined plane or whether it just falls straight down. In all of these cases, it would be losing 294 joules of potential energy. So in all of those cases, it has to gain 294 joules of kinetic energy. So we end up at the same speed in each case. You can't use kinematics here. Because remember that um, 
the, uh, your acceleration here is going to depend on Wx. And Wx is going to be constantly changing because you're at a constantly different angle on this slope. In fact, this would be very difficult to analyze using Newton's second law because we need almost a different axis for each point, right? Because um, the x-axis is supposed to be parallel to the slope, but the slope is constantly changing here. When we did inclined planes before, we did inclined planes with a constant slope. We didn't even try to handle something really complicated like this with a curve. So you can see how conservation of energy makes things much simpler. It can handle a much more complicated case than we could have handled with Newton's second law. All right, so this is a good example where kinematics won't work, but kinetic energy is, um, conservation of energy is about the same as before. One of the most important things to see here is just because you have non-conservative forces, doesn't mean that mechanical energy won't be conserved. If the non-conservative forces are all perpendicular to your movement, then your energy will still be conserved. 